Alright, 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 alright. Shout out to y'all, man. Shout out to y'all. My name is Jamel Saladin. This is the Jamel Saladin show, but uh, this is the backup channel too. Hold on, let me write right, on mute. Right, 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 right. Mute that. Mute that. I got a whole nother channel. It's called the Poker Faced Society. Just wanted you to know that. Let's get into the story. I just woke up, so for, let me get into a rhythm, let me get into a groove. I didn't want to play any music. I'm trying to straighten out the show. Splashing's in the house. Shout it out, Splashing. I'm sorry for being late. A um, lot going on. Daughter went to the emergency room last night. It's like a whole lot of stuff is going on. Um... Yeah, practically slept in my office. Me and Bimmy had to do some work this morning. I caught a little morning nap. And now I'm here for it because I had set up the show earlier. This show, we're going to talk about Gamma. Let me just do some house cleaning, summarize the show, what we're going to be talking about earlier for the people in the replay. We're going to talk about something called Gamma today. We're actually going to actually talk about another guy named Larry Jackson. Is that his name? It's crazy talk. Yes, Larry Jackson. It just sounds so stereotypical. Does Larry Jackson sound stereotypically black? You know Larry Jackson? Yeah. Yeah. Larry Jackson definitely sounds stereotypically black. I'm not gonna hold you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I had to pause right there for a second to make sure I even knew somebody named. Do I know a fucking Larry Jackson? What the fuck? I thought I was being racist to myself. Then I realized, nah, son's name is Larry Jackson. Shout out to Larry Jackson. Um, get my show set up. Get my show set up. I had it set up, but uh, like I said, I was on nap time. All right, cool. Let's jump into this thing, man, because I'm kind of all over the place right now. Who is Larry Jackson? Why would, why, why would we be discussing him today? We're not only going to discuss him. We're going to also discuss what he's created. Shout out to Zinco Het, if I'm saying that correctly. Shout it out. Who's Larry Jackson? I, you know, I'm not, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I'm not I'm not gonna act like one of those people that have been in the music industry for so long, and now I'm gonna front like I always knew who Larry Jackson is. I didn't know who Larry Jackson was. Came to I I've, I seen he was on a panel, something called the Milken Institute. And I comes to find out that they're a think tank. Right? Snoop Dogg was going off about payments. I did a video on it. Hopefully you guys seen it. About payments. And how the royalties are collected for these streams. I said, oh, snap. Snoop Dogg out here complaining about that? And I didn't know why Larry was on the panel with him up there. But I figured Larry had to be important. Figured that. There's a couple of things that caught me about Larry. 
It's funny because some some people with money, you you know, you got to figure that he has some type of money, right? He wasn't up there flossing. He wasn't Gucci this and Gucci that. He wasn't Versace out. But I was proud because he seemed to be in. Pan-African man. Young man too. Who. Not only represented. Urban entertainment. But also. The nerdy acts. Like myself. The brainy acts bro. See some of us are ambidextrous. We um. Yeah, we could do that street stuff if that's what it called for. But we probably would rather not. You understand what I'm saying? Um, and there's many people in the hood just like that, bro. Not everybody in the hood wants to represent all this other stuff. Why? Because the truth is every a lot of people know where it leads to. Not everyone wants to go to prison. When you've been through the system, it might be a little bit easier and just for you to. And when I say easy, I don't mean doing your bit. I mean easier for you to grasp mentally and overall. My brother. Well, I have more than one brother. I have two brothers that did 25 years apiece. One brother passed away, unfortunately, in prison. Um, my other, my big brother. Well, they're both my big brothers, and then my other big brother came home, um, and he's really doing his thing. He's trying, you know, he's not trying. He's staying out of that place. He wants nothing to do with that place, and you know. Um, He did all that street stuff. I mean, to the point where rappers mention him in songs and all that other stuff. But if you met him today, you would not be able to tell none of that because he does not. He's so far removed from all that stuff. All he send me stuff all day is things that to elevate and get to the next level. That's all. That's all he wants to talk about. I was. I have a younger brother. He went through the system at like 13. You understand? I never went there. So it jumped. It skipped me. It went brother, brother, me, skipped to my little brother. I, was, I didn't want to go. But I'm going to keep it real with you. If I would have got caught for any of those things I did, I would have been right in there to... Right? But my point was this by mentioning the hood and it's people want to make it seem like it's one sided, like it's not a lot of tough gangsters, smart brainiacs in the, in, in, the, in the hood. There is. I'm telling you right now. That's nothing to do with Larry Jackson, because I don't think he's um, trying to represent the tough side, but. He has some affinity with urban music. I didn't know who he was. I had to look him up. I said, oh, Larry Jackson been out here working. And for him to be had, uh, have been an exec, I didn't write that down, but he was an exec at Apple Music. And all the things I wrote up there, I did not write down that he was an exec. At Apple Music. So first thing I want to do is before we really get into this conversation. Is I would love to play. Some audio from Larry at this conference I was telling you about. The Milken Institute Conference. This is a think tank. They have a conference every year. They invited Snoop Dogg and Larry Jackson. Let me just go ahead and pull that up. I don't know why it doesn't show the time. 
That's just bananas to me. Across. Alright, let me get my headphones. I literally just woke up. So my apologies. Alright, let's go. All artistic and commercial touch points. And I love this. Gamma provides the resources, capabilities, and experience to help cultural icons develop their business vision and accelerate its execution. Gamma is not a label. No. It is not a management company. It's a connective tissue bridging the gap between enigmatic genius and everyday life. Those are some good words right there. <laughs> yeah, it's a little loquacious. I can maybe go a little more succinctly on that. Gamma, um, you know, it was, it was birthed from my experiences being at Apple, you know. Um, it was birthed from my experiences being at Interscope, uh, being at RCA Music Group. Um, managing so you know I took the best of those experiences and put them in a blender and created this company that um, you know quite frankly the way I see it is actually an enterprise software company enterprise software tech company for music as much as it is uh, a content company I hate to um, interrupt I'm just so proud of him man I'm just so proud we need more representation there are other Pan-African men from America who are not so street-driven, so uh, gang-driven. We don't all want to have loose sex with any woman that walks past us. We don't all want to resolve everything by shooting everything. Many of us can hold decent conversations without using Ebonics. Many of us choose to, we just, you know, we get in our comfort zone. And obviously, we have two different languages that uh, that we can switch in and out. It's like learn. It's like Spanish, just on a lower level, right? And then the, once you hit that southern accent, it could get real stupid. But I'm just so proud, man. He's not up there with a thousand emblems all over his his clothing. Did he go too far by not hiring a barber? Maybe he did. But, you know, right now we're giving Larry Jackson the props. I'm just I'm just so proud. Sorry for stopping the show. All right, let's let's bring it back 10 seconds, 20 seconds and let Larry start over. This is the co-founder of Gamma. All right, and we'll get into a little bit more about Gamma and some of the similar companies. And what does this mean for young artists? What does this mean for young artists? This is a great conversation. Let's go. At RCA Music Group, um, managing. So, you know, I took the best of those experiences and put them in a blender and created this company that, um, you know, quite frankly, the way I see it is actually an enterprise software company, enterprise software tech company for music, as much as it is uh, a content company. Um, culture company and certainly a media company. So, um, yeah, we're not a label, you know, we're, we're operating in that space. But Death Row Records, which Snoop is representing today head to toe, and you're, you are the, the steward of Death Row now, Snoop. You acquired those rights. That has a home at Gamma, correct? Oh, big home. Um, it was literally the first thing we put out. As a matter of fact, um, 
you know, shout out to the guys from Eldridge in the room. I just saw Todd Boley on stage a little while ago, but we were knocking this deal out on Christmas Eve, if you remember Snoop. And one of the things that, that Todd and I um, came up with at the last hour because of just my relationship with Snoop and how much I wanted him to be a part of what we were doing and, and, and wear the jersey as much as we were going to wear his jersey, um, Snoop was a partner in Gamma. Snoop, you know, came into our Series A round and, you know, he's not just an artist whose music we distribute, um, but he's my partner, you know, as much as Eldridge is, as much as Apple is, you know, as much as I've certainly put in capital as well. So, um, yeah, death row is Gamma, you know. Yeah, so Snoop, being where you are in your career, and we're going to just like start in the present, we'll go back. Um All right, so that was Larry Jackson there talking about Gamma. And he said a lot, and I'm not, I'm going to keep it real. When I looked up Gamma, I had to read it a couple of times. Like, all right, what, is, what is Gamma, though? Like, I, I really didn't know. Let me try to pull it up right now for you guys. I'll try to pull up the website. And I figured it out. Because I like to be able to ex explain things to people. But they're not like, wait, what is going on? What is this? Let me just see if I can pull up the site for you guys. And that's the other thing. The site is not... I can't really find the site. Uh, let me try it. Let me try this thing. I'm going to try it one time. And then I'm not going to try no more. Right? So, this is not Gamma. This is Gamma Apple. But this is not Gamma. But... Nonetheless, here's what Gamma is, right? Um, Gamma is the best way for me to describe this. It Here's the artist's vision. And then it helps it create that that vision it hears the artist's business model and then it helps it create that business through resources through guidance so it's sort of like business and vision development but not only on the music side because life is evolving right now, right? So you have to think. Um, when The last time I ran my, my um, youth program and I asked the kids, what do they want to be? And I went around and I swore all in them, like a majority of them was going to say rappers. And they shocked me. They didn't say rappers. They said, I want to be a YouTuber. Everybody kept on going around the room. I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a YouTuber. So I was like, oh, wow, that's that's wild. But it's actually not that wild. Let me show you something. Let me show you why it's not that wild. That's Daniel Eck, CEO and founder of Spotify. All right, so they have something called Audio first. And I just want to read a little bit of this for you guys. More than 10 years ago, we found that Spotify to give consumers something they couldn't get. Music anytime, anywhere, and at the right price. Along the way, we broke the grip piracy had on our industry and restored the growth of global music through paid on-demand streaming. Um... Shout out to Omi and the Hellcat. Free the Hellcat, man. Free the Hellcat, man. Anyway, back to my story. I'm proud of what we've accomplished. But what I didn't know when we launched on consumers in 2008 was that audio, not just music, would be the future of Spotify. More With more than 200 million users 
around the globe, Spotify is already one of the world's most used apps. But we see an opportunity apart from where we sit today. An opportunity that will allow us to reach beyond music to engage users entirely new ways. Now, as I read this, I want you guys to pay attention to something. Pay attention to the the numbers that he's quoting in this. Right? He says, based on radio industry data, we believe it is safe assumption that over time, more than 20% of all Spotify listening will be, listen, non-music content. Over over time, more than 20% of all Spotify listening will be non-music content. This means the potential to grow much faster with more original programming and to dif- differentiate differentiate Spotify by playing to what makes us unique with all with the goal of becoming the world's number one audio platform. Right? So he's talking about more than just playing music. That's why we announced today the strategic acquisitions of two podcasting podcasting companies, G- Gimlet and Anchor. These companies serve two different distinct roles in the industry. Gimlet is one of the best content creators in the world with unique celebrated podcast shows like Homecoming. Well, I didn't want to give them a shout out. Fifteen billion hours of content on the platform during Q4. Hmm. There was some other numbers here. I was I wanted you to hear. The numbers was crazy. And that could be on another page. Let's see if it's on this page here. Let me see. This is also on Spotify. How to make your own podcast playlists. There are more than three billion user generated playlists on Spotify. That means hours upon hours of carefully curated lists of tracks listeners can't get enough of. Until recently, pl- playlist was exclusive to music, but now, in the true spirit of audio first, Spotify users can combine music and podcasts on the same playlist. I don't know where the um those numbers was at that I'm looking for. But I did this show today. It's not a it's not a crazy exciting show. It's one of those shows where I I, I would rather be informative. It's for you to say, "Ah, it wasn't that funny. He didn't have me in stitches today." But you walked away knowing more, whether you liked it or not, right? You you know who Larry Jackson is now. Um we're not done. We're not done. Um, because I know my demographics and most of my demographics, you're probably going to be dealing with a young nephew, a young son. And I want you to be always stay in tune with what these young cats got going on. These young people got going on out here. Because as. Podcasting and YouTube becomes more popular. It would do you justice to understand where this thing is going. Just like, you know, I'm hitting some bumps, right? But I think I'm hitting some bumps so that other people don't have to, right? And as you can see, I'm starting to change things up. I would love to get up here and just play music before my show. I would love to do that. But as you can see, I'm starting to put play ball because at the end of the day, you have to build something up. And by just being a rebel like I was being, it, it's not going to equate to money. And we need money to make the machine run. And there's a lot of cats out here getting it big time. But you got to play ball. So it's out here. And it's a certain, as I'm doing my knowledge and I'm doing the study, and there's a certain way that you have to do it right let's get back to i want to get back to there we go all right so 
Gamma, they actually acquired a, another company called Vidya. And Vidya, they also do global distribution, um, advanced rights management, royalty payments, and, de- and data analytics. Now, I just want to talk to you for a second. This is from somebody, me, myself. I'm also an artist. If you've never heard of me, I do lo-fi music. I do conscious hip-hop, right? And the thing is, even when I say conscious hip-hop, automatically I think it's going to be whack. I'm not going to hold you, right? But my music is not whack. I have a few albums out there. Um, I'm, I'm on all the streaming platforms. Here's what I don't like. Let me take a sip of this coffee and I'm going to tell you what I didn't like. And why it was time to take a real good look at all these companies. I went through DistroKid. DistroKid, along with some other companies that we we will be looking at, I kind of want to go over what's the difference between all these companies. Everyone's coming out with some type of company that will help you get your music on the main streaming platforms. And there's so many sidebar companies that will help you You know, you sign up, you register with them, and they're like, hey, we'll get your music on iHeart. We'll get your music on Spotify. Same thing with podcasts. So it would would help to do some due diligence before you just jump into this world. So... Video had a, a pretty tight niche business model. I mean, the global distribu- distribution, that was kind of, that was kind of common, right? And if you don't know what global distribution means, that means it's, it's, it's kind of the same thing as when records were physically on vinyl. By the way, records are still people are still buying vinyl records. I did not believe my man when he told me that. He told me that he sells a lot of records in Europe, right? He doesn't sell a lot of music out here. He sells a lot of albums out in Europe. He's a backpacker, my man from Mount Vernon, right? Pritchett. And he does this thing, and this is what I want to talk about. Trisha's in the house. Shout it out, Trisha. Um, Trisha sent me some amazing stuff. I can't wait to get the Poker Face Society page back. Um, Trisha and Splashin have been sending me some stuff behind the scenes. Like, both of them have been sending me some stuff that I can't wait to talk about. But I can't talk about it here on, um, Jamel Saladin Podcast Show. Because this is more like urban, um, hip-hop type of news and coverage. You know what I'm saying? So, we go- that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep it right there. But let me just, I kind of forgot where I was at, but I know what topic where I was on, right? So as an urban hip-hop, lo-fi, conscious rapper, I originally distributed my, my, my music through disc, DistroKid. And what I didn't know about DistroKid was like, right now, my music, I have to some. I have to take my music off of DistroKid. I have to unrelease everything, right? Because they're they're taking payments. They're collecting payments on my music, and they're not even paying me anymore. So it's kind of like I don't know what's going on with with DistroKid, but I'm gonna tell you right now. We don't need. That I don't think that's the right choice for you. You have to watch the fine print with a lot of these companies because they will represent you for a year. And then after that, they were like, they just push out so much music, so much music with no real place for you, no niche market for you to be in, no genre of music. It's just kind of like, oh, we'll put you out, we'll put you out. And they every because it's it's so easy to do. Anybody that comes out with a song could do it. And next thing you know, you're on all these streaming platforms. 
And that I guess that's what I was talking about about the physical records, how people are still buying um, vinyl, right? And distribution would mean that you get your vinyl and your cassette tapes to all these different places that sell vinyl and cassette tapes. They would get it done for you. And that was a network. That was a chain that was a chain service that mostly the Jewish people kind of like own that chain service. So if you're asking yourself like, yo, why we couldn't get our own music distribution is because they had already had that in place and they were very good at what they did. And it was very strong at it. And combating with them would have been an uphill battle for sure. They were not going to just let you come in and take control of it. And I'm not saying that because they're Jewish. I don't think anybody would in their right mind just let a competitor come in, um, whether it was Italian, whether it was Wasp. Um, I don't have that much faith that the black community would have not would have fought for their position like that. Um, sometimes we're too given and we're too, you know, we're not as vicious in certain areas as we need to be. In real life, we're very vicious, but when it comes to like business and things, I think we give in too way too easy. And that's, that's just my own perspective, right? But then you have other groups of people that they fight tooth and nail to protect and preserve, and they won't give an inch. And that's how I kind of seen the music distribution, because I've always asked, I said, why, if we have all this money, why are you still, like, we had a bunch of money in the hood. Dope boy money, all this money. Athlete, athletes had money. Athletes was running around trying to get a deal. I said, what kind of sense that make? That didn't make no sense. You're an athlete. You got millions of dollars. Why you need a deal? Then I understood that they can make the song, but who? how they going to get the song to the people? So just because you was a millionaire didn't mean that you still needed that help at the end of the day. Because because they're a network of people, they could always call and shut that joint down. Somebody could call and be like, yo, this, that, and the third. God forbid they say you said something um, against their faith or race or something like that. Then that would just, even if it was a lie, guess what? They're not going to look into that lie. Somebody, one of us said it, you're out of here. Right? Then comes along the digital era. And that disrupt that's disrupted the whole world. I'm telling you, because it had to they had to break it, they had to destroy it, rebuild. Destroy, rebuild. And now that took some time because I remember that era. Like, damn, what's going on? Record companies, record labels, not companies. Record labels was like kicking people out the building. Like, it's over. You don't got no job no more. We can't even. It was crazy. Now you're starting to see things really being put back to, in place. And we're not there yet. But one of the things that Gamma is trying to fix is... This right here, roy, roy, royalty payments. Now, when they acquired Video, they acquired Video, and they got their their platform and their customers. But I think that they acquired them for their royalty payment software system. From when I from what I read on their website, it was a little bit more advanced than everybody else. So you got. Larry Jackson talking about he wants to get people paid not every quarter. He's like, what is that? Every quarter? He's trying to get paid people paid every week. You know how revolutionary that is? Do you know how revolutionary that is? I'm talking about content creators, music artists, YouTubers, all that. He wants to get you paid every 
week. I don't think we... I think you're going to have a hard time get, getting people to do anything else once that happens. Everybody's going to want to become a podcaster or a YouTuber. And the thing is this. It still takes work. It still takes consistency. So obviously everyone won't last, right? It still takes a, a bit of a ingenuity, creativity. I think that Gamma did the right thing by not going into management, right? Because if it goes into management, all of a sudden, it's in direct competition with Rock Nation. And that's not what you want to do. You don't want to be in direct competition with Rock Nation, Hove being Hove. Maybe more resources, maybe. You know, a little bit more resources there. Stronger name. That's a up that's a uphill fight, right? That's kind of like what we were speaking about when we were saying why why don't these other millionaires just go create their own distribution chain? And it was kind of like, well, it's an uphill fight. Maybe in the digital era, I could have seen them doing it, right? I don't, we should have stepped in there. I would have loved to have seen, and we did step in. Rock Nation stepped in. Uh, I'm not sure what, if Revolt really does that. But it was easier for Rock Nation. Because when we talk about publishing, really, we're talking about your artist that's under your umbrella creating some type of content, right? And then you going to keep track of their residuals and make sure they get what's theirs. So Gamma is not a label like Rock Nation has a label department. Gamma is not management. Like Rock Nation has a management department. And obviously we know Gamma is not into sports. Only thing they share in common is that they will go find your what royalties belong to you. And they will bring it back to you. So that's the difference right now. I'm really doing this show so that people have a better understanding today. It's not a, it's not really a, a f- like one of those shows that's meant to make you laugh and all that other stuff, right? Then we have TuneCore. Shout out Pat Poots, who is the ambassador for hip hop rap music over there at TuneCore. He is the ambassador director. So, you know, shout out to this. Again, I'm really proud of Pat Poots. He doesn't never, I don't never see him give off no n- super negative. Uh, Energy, right? And he's from Brooklyn. So we we definitely know it's in him and it's around him. But that is not the reflection that he gives off. And so many people want to know why they can't get ahead. And I'm telling you right now, not everyone wants to deal with that energy. People will act like that's the, the, the wave. And then when it comes to you getting to the bag, to the to the boardroom, I'm telling you right now, they're going to see you as high risk. So you have to learn how to become ambidextrous in that. Know when to shut it off, shut it on. But Pat Poos, you know, he's always been a great communicator. Very, in- very intelligent. And he's just another one of those guys that I'm really, really proud of. When it comes to um, being able to switch and adapt, evolve and adapt. That's what this whole thing is about. I've, I've said to you guys, if you listen to my other show, I'm always teaching about the what's coming down the pipeline. 
tech wise, biomedical wise, financial wise. You have to stay on top on of the of the trends, right? And really you gotta never I'm not one to stay on top of the trends. I like kind of know what's coming down the pipeline ahead of time. So when it comes to things like TuneCore and all these other things, I may be late a lot of times because I already spoke about just the overall concept. I price I usually speak about the overall concept years before it really hits and then it's like okay well i spoke about that but by the time i bring it back up it's it has been so granularized like now like now you have a bunch of companies like this right let's take a look at tunecore tunecore based out of brooklyn what do they do well they do music distribution right so this is not the same thing as well it it it, it kind of is the same thing as Rock Nation because Rock Nation is a label. So Rock Nation as a label will make sure that your music is distributed um, globally if you get signed to the label. TuneCore. They do music distribution. They're going to get you on the Spotify. They're going to get you on Apple. They're going to get you on Amazon Music, Deezer. All of these different digital streaming platforms I think they call them DSPs so if you hear anybody say DSP digital streaming platform right and they're gonna they also are gonna make sure you get your publishing now me, myself, I wanted to know what was the big difference. Why should a young kid sign, g subscribe to TuneCore instead of DistroKid, right? Like, what's the big difference? Or United Masters. Why should a young kid sign to TuneCore instead of United Masters? Who, which one of you guys are doing the most for me as an artist where am i getting the most bang for my buck right because to let's get it right i could sign up to, i could probably sign up to tune court today i cannot just walk into rock nation like that and and get a label deal you understand you're getting thrown out and i have been thrown out of many of record labels in the city proudly Um, just want to read the comments real quick. Splashing says, I like to put up relevant show stuff in the discord. If you guys have not, let me ask you, um, splashing, could you possibly, um, can you put the discord link in the chat real quick? Now let's take a five minute break. And I just want to talk about something real quick. I have the mailing list pinned to the chat. Right. And I'm glad to see that more people are starting to put their name on the mailing list. Please put your name on the mailing list because why are you putting that name on the mailing list? Because YouTube is not going to help the small. They don't do the heavy lifting. They want you to do the heavy lifting. And once you start to get popping, which means you have to figure out what, why, how to get popping. Why? Because there's so many YouTubers. I think I read there was over 100 million YouTubers <laughs> out here. G Mac is Mount Vernon is in the building. That's crazy. Whole Mount Vernon pulled up at one time. That's just like us though. We got G Mac 914. My brother from Mount Vernon. We got I call him Ox. You understand? I knew him a long time. He done changed his life, but I knew him when he was ox. You heard me? Um, go over to his channel. We rebuilding we. Go over his channel. And um. And subscribe, right? And you're gonna see G Mac over there, at the O five O, doing what he do as an ambassador over there. Now, um.
so subscribe to the mailing list and splashing he's he'll grab the um discord i don't know where splash is at sometimes he's out here walking around he may be at work but if he gets a chance he's going to put the discord in the chat and when you when you get on our discord man you could um yeah yeah put up the discord link bro please um come over to discord and you'll see the conversations and join and and feel free all right now let's get back to the show Really, I just want everyone to kind of know, if you're just coming in, we're breaking down some of these these companies that want to want our business, right, as content creators. Do you have a book in mind? And let me say this, man. Let me say this. Right now's the time. Stop, stop clowning around. Whatever idea you have, it is time to have laser focus right now. It is time to have laser focus right now. And I'm going to give you some jewels. I'm going to give you some jewels. Some people don't, they don't want me to give you the jewels. How many of you ever wanted to write a book? If you ever wanted to write a book, right now is the time. I'm telling you right now. Now. I'm giving you some jewels right now. How many people I got in the building? I got six people. That's good enough. That means there's five people in here because one of those people was me. Here's the jewels. I'm going to tell you how to do it, right? Tell you how to do it. If you want to write a book, you first get the idea for the, like, what are you going to write about, right? Don't worry about, yo, I don't know how to write a book. Shh, don't worry about none of that. None of that. I'm going to tell you how to start writing your book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me and Bimmy was doing some work this morning. We got some work to finish up. Um, Here's how we do it. What is your book about? First of all, they always told me write everything down, right? When I was young, I didn't listen. I didn't listen. I didn't think it was that. It was that serious. So it was like, uh, I heard people say it. Whip Wop is in the house. Shout it out. Whip Wop, you just in time. I'm about to talk about writing books. I'm going to show you how to do it. When they told me to write everything down as a youth, I didn't think it was that important. As I, I got older and I got more into quantum physics and metaphysics then I understood the power of writing things down one for organization right don't always rely on this up here but two when you write it down you have to look at it meaning you're going to physically perceive it so that's a signal a frequency that you're that has to connect To your optical receivers, right? Your eyeballs. It's going to connect to your brain and it's going to be a reminder. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to. And the more you see it, the more repetitive it is. It's in the back of your head. So what I'm saying is write it down. Because you, you may remind yourself and it will keep you on track, right? Number two, I'm telling you to write it down because what I'm about to tell you, you have to organize your thoughts, right? So I'm going to simplify and do simplify it for you, though. Well, the first thing I want you to do is is just is decide what you're going to write about, what you want to write about. The next thing I want you to do after that is I want you to go to chat GPT. I don't want to open up my chat GPT because you got nosy eyeballs all over, all over the place. You understand? So I'm not going to open up my chat GPT right now because I got a whole thing on the side. I don't want you looking at things you're not supposed to be looking at. So you go to chat GPT 4.0. That's what you're going to type in and go on Google. Chat GPT 
4.0. Type that in Google. Hit enter. Chat GPT link 4.0 is going to come up. You hit that. The main page is going to come up. You're going to see a little link like quarter of the way down. It's going to say try chat GPT. You're going to hit that link. It's going to make you sign in into your email address. You're going to sign in. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're saying YouTube is playing notification games. YouTube plays notification games, and that's why I got that mailing list right up top there. If you subscribe to the mailing list, I email the Face Mob. Face Mob is the Poker Face Society, all the subscribers. I email you guys, and you will know when you when Saladin is going to go live. Or I do a show. You understand? And that's how we do that. So please subscribe. Also, if you if you get connected to the Discord, um the Discord anyway is in my main video. So if you go to one of my videos, you might see the Discord there. Um if you get connected to the Discord, you can also get information there. Alright, let's get back to how you're gonna write this book. You go to chat GPT. Now And let me give you all the jewelry. Let me stop playing around and give you all the jewelry. Because there's a plug-in. There's a plug-in that you're going to need, right? So let me just give you all the jewelry and stop playing around. I just forgot the name of the plug-in, so. Hold on. I'm going to find it for you. Don't worry about it. Okay, what is the name of this here plugin? Okay, the name of the plugin is A I P R M. I'm giving you game right now. I don't have to give you this. I could save it all for myself, I promise you. I could save it all for myself. And just get ahead without you guys getting on. But here's what I learned. It don't matter. Some Sometimes it don't matter that you give it to them. Like they say you can lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink. You can give people whatever you want to give them. That don't mean they're going to use it. Right? Because their drive is not there. So they get excited. Oh snap. I got the juice. And they don't even know what to do with it. So. Let me see if I can open up this jewel right here. All right. I can't open it up without showing you all my stuff. And I'm not in the mood to show you all my stuff. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I think I'm being generous enough by telling you how to do this. So I gave you the name of the game. A-I-P-R-M is the... Is the um, what do you call that? You have to add. You have to add that on. Okay, now here's what you're gonna do. They have like two thousand different apps that connect to Chat GPT. That 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 plugin. That's what it's called. Good God. The plugin I gave you, A I P R M, it has like two thousand plugins to co that that connect with ChatGPT. I use it all the time. Um, I mainly use it. See, this channel was dead, but now you're starting to see this channel grow, right? Since I came over here, this is why I'm not worried about YouTube because the more you know, right, you'll start to see. This channel is going to take off. Don't even worry about that. And it's a process. So don't think something is going to go overnight. But you're going to see this channel take off. I promise you. Now. What I do is. 
they have 2,000 apps. Some of these things I use for... <laughs> I'm going to give you some game. How many people we got in the house? We got five. Good. People dropping off. That means it's only four. If they don't watch the show, they don't get the jury. If they don't watch... I'm not worried about it. If they don't watch the show, they don't get the jury. So I'm going to take a break from talking about Larry Jackson for right now. Right, We're going to go back to that. We're going to go back to Tune Core. We're going to go back to all of that. But I wanted to give you something. Sometimes I like when people drop out the conversation. It just wasn't meant for them to hear. You did. Alright, this is what I do. They got like, they got, uh, they got plugins over there for everything. If you want to write a book, they got something called a one-click book creator. You just put in the idea and it just writes a book for you. It just writes the book for you. And shout out to the Mount Vernon, New York. You understand? How we do that? How we do that? It's the M. That's the V. Mount Vernon. Big shout outs. Listen to me. They have a plugin over there that says one click book creation. You type in the word and it creates it. Now, let me give you the jury. This is where no one's going to tell you this. No one's going to tell you this. If you try to write a book like that over there, it's going to write you some generic book and your book is going to be whack. What you have to do is you have to work with the AI. You have to treat the AI as an assistant, right? So you do some of the work and then you give it to the AI. First thing I did about done with my first book. I'm giving you the jury right now. How many people we got in the house? Oh, more people's coming in. I got to get tight lip. Got to get tight lip. I'm giving you the jury right now. If you do some of the work with the AI, You'll get your book done in no time. You're going to be amazed how fast you get this book done. Right? I'm going to give you all the jewelry right now. All I ask you to do is hit the like button and share. If you have a Facebook, please hit the share button and share this to your Facebook right now. I'm giving you the jewelry right now. Tell them I'm giving you the jewelry. I'm, I'm going to show you how to write a book right now. I'm going to give it all to you. Share that. I'm going to give you some more. I'm going to give you a lot of game right now. That the rest of them going to going to charge you for and all of this other stuff. I could charge you for it. But in this one episode, I'm going to give it to you. And I already got a client. Let me give you, I'm going to show you how to make some money. I already got one client. And now I only need about nine more of those clients to make $10,000 a month. Mainly using chat GPT. You ready? Let's go. Share, share it on the Facebook. Tell them to come in right now and, and ask them to hit the subscribe button once they get here. Now, this is what you're going to do. The first thing, now that you got your idea for your book, you already went to ChatGPT, you downloaded that. You already went to AIPRM and got the plugin. Now you got 2,000 plugins to work with your ChatGPT. You know about the one, the one button click, right? Let's start from here. Hope you're writing these things down. Or do whatever you have to do. What you have to do is you have to help the AI. Now, every chat, every chat, it's supposed to remember the conversation, right? So when you start a new chat, don't mix and jumble conversations in the chat. Meaning, if you started a conversation 
and you was talking about a book, right? And then all of a sudden you wanted to know something, so you 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 started a conversation about weather machines. Do not have a conversation about your book and a weather machines in that same chat. Separate them. So it's usually going to take the first few words that you type in, and that's going to be the title of your chat. So what I do is, the first thing I do is I type what I want the chat to be named. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Now, this way I could find my chat later on because I'd be having a lot of chats. My chats is filled up over there. I'm talking to AI about everything every day. We ain't here talking about nothing, me in the chat. Arguing like we brothers. Yeah. So, what you need to do, the next step, is you have to take that big idea that you have and you have to break it into sections. That's going to be your next step, right? So, the first thing I did was I, I told the AI, this is what my book is about. Watch, listen to what I did. I said, this is what my book is about. So you had to write that, right? Take your time. Write it out, the whole concept. Don't worry about details and all that. That's that stuff going to come in later. Tell your AI about the concept of your of your book. How many characters, the main characters. The location, the time setting. Once you have all of that, you give it to the AI and you say, this is what my idea is about, my book is about. I want to have this many chapters. Please break down ideas for each chapter. And it's going to give you, zoop, just like that, you're going to have like 12, 12, 20, whatever chapters you want. How many chapters you want? You gonna have that many now? You know what that did for you? That just that just made your life so much easier because now you could take chapter by chapter and you'll know what to write, right? And really, this is still a rough draft because even when I asked the AI to do that, I still have to change the name of those those titles. I have to move, uh, but what it gives me an idea is it gives me a map of how I want to write my story. Boom. So right now you're cooking with grease. You know why? You ahead of the game, really. I mean, more than anybody else, they didn't even start writing their book. You done came over to Saladin's channel, subscribed, shared it on the Facebook. That's all he asked. And he done gave you the jury. And now you feel so much more accomplished because you are that much closer to your book getting done. And we're not done. Let's continue on. Now... You about to take every chapter bit by bit. What I did was I looked up how many words are in a chapter in most novels. And it said anywhere between three and 5,000 words. Depending on the book, the, of the, your book, right? So right now, I think my chapters, they, my chapters have around 2,000 words to 3,000 words. The AI... Listen to me. I'm giving you the jury. No one is no one is going to tell you this. What I'm telling you right now. When I say nobody, put up a link. Put up a link where the dudes is telling you specifically what I'm telling you. Put up a link. Nobody's about to tell you what I'm telling you right now. The AI is going to get lazy on you. It don't it, it's going to give you very generic. So let's just say you wanted to write about a dude from the 80s, 90s that was selling drugs in your town. That's what your first chapter is about. I don't know what your book is about. I'm just giving you an idea right now, right? And you already gave the AI the name of the main character, this, that, and the third. What I'm telling you is he's going to... Now that we broke it, the chapters down... What I also do 
is I say, I tell the AI, I say, okay, now we're going to write this chapter. But what I want to do is I want to break this chapter down into something I call chunks. You can talk to your AI. Talk to your AI so it learns how you talk. So if it knows that, okay, we're going to break down these this chapter into chunks. I said, let's deal with the first thing first, right? So what I do is I write just enough. Don't worry about your writing being perfect, right? So say the first, the first chapter in your book starts off with Eli came out the projects. It was a Saturday. It was around 11 o'clock. All of a sudden, it was gunshots. Just that. Don't worry about being the perfect writer, right? Just write what you see in your head. Just write it, because when you give it to the AI, he's going to the, the AI is going to rewrite it. But here's the trick: you have to tell the AI, "Don't rush." You know how many times I tell my AI, "Don't rush." I'm like, "Yo, slow down, bro. You rushing because the AI get lazy and it just kind of gives you some a story." Here's the jury. Here's the big jury. You have to tell your AI the writing style that you're looking for. So, and you have to repeat yourself. It's not a one-time thing. I tell my, I tell my AI like five times a night when I'm writing. Don't forget to be descriptive. Be descriptive. I want description. I want describe the atmosphere, right? Because people and I'm telling you, once it finished writing and you break it up into chunks, don't let him write a whole paragraph. That's not how you're going to help. That's not how you're going to use the AI to write this book. Break it up into chunks. You give him what the first chunk is going to be about. He's going to give it back. If you like it, you say, eh. if, if you don't like it, you, you feel it could be more descriptive. You say, I want you to rewrite this, but be more descriptive about the setting. You know what I'm saying? When you read books, sometimes they let you know how the air smells. You know what I'm saying? That it was a sweet smell. Or the air smelled like gun gunpowder. You know, this these are the type of things that brings the reader and the reader will forget that they even write they, they're reading a book. I'm giving you the jewelry right now. I'm giving you the jewelry right now. So now you pretty much I pretty much gave you an idea on how to get your chapters, how to write your chapters. You're gonna write your chapters in chunks. You're not gonna write out, don't try to attempt to get the AI to write out the whole chapter. You know how many words you want in your chapter. I got some dynamic. I, I got some real dynamic chapters in my book and it took me, it still took me hours, but it took me hours because I had to tell the AI, now write that again. And it was taking me more hours, my first few chapters, but now it's not taking me so much more hours. It's not taking me hours anymore because I developed the system that I'm giving to you right now for free, only for sharing my, my, um, my video on Facebook. I didn't even ask you for no no bread, right? Brother Ben X, shout him out. He was definitely going to hit you over the head for this type of information, huh? 19 Keys, shout it out. I love my brothers, but they was going to hit you over the head for this digital real estate right here. You understand? So don't front on Saladin. Just, just share the joint on Facebook. That's all I'm asking. Because none of them dudes that sell that digital this, digital that was going to give it to you like this. I mess around and see you in two months and you got a whole book out. And that's what I want to see. I want to see our people come up. Because at the end of the day, we are talking about content creation, right? That's what we talk about today, right? We talk about Larry Jackson starting his own, uh, a, a, a new content creation platform that helps you create they don't they're not management they're not a label no they just help you create your business and uh, uh your vision 
And I think it's high time we stop playing games and we get involved. But a lot of us, we don't know, we don't want to share the information. Yo, you know how many people is in the world? Why should I fear how to teach you how to write a book for free? And no, nah, no, nah, I ain't going to teach him because he going to write a book and it's going, you know, he going to take my idea. You don't even know what my book is about, beloved. All I did was teach you how to fish today and I'm not done teaching you yet. All I did was teach you how to fish and I'm not even done teaching you, bro. That's just the book. That book is for your residual income. That book is for your daughter. That book is for your son. Because what's going to happen is, then you're going to reach out to Mikey B and you're going to say, Mikey B, Saladin told me how to write a book. How do I get my own publishing company? And Mikey B is going to say, I can't wait to tell you how to get your own publishing company. It's not hard. I just want, I just felt like shouting out Mikey B. Shout out to Mikey B. You could probably figure it out. I just felt like shouting out Mikey B from Queens, man. You understand? Queens been good to solid ding. Brooklyn been good. But Queens been good too. Hmm? So, you start the publishing company and you put it in your daughter's name or you put it in your son's name or you put it in your name, whoever. But, the, you know, I mine, I'm writing this book so that when it, I want the residuals to go to my daughter. Because if I can't leave her nothing out, which I will be able to leave her stuff. But I just want to be able to leave a legacy, leave a trust for my daughter. Each and every one of us could do it. We're led to believe that for our children to be trust fund babies, we have to be rich. That was the misconception. We don't have to be rich. Your insurance can be a trust. And now your child is a trust fund baby. Just like that. You have a book, right? And we about to finish. I just want to close, put some closure on the book because I got some other things to tell you guys, right? So let's just finish up this book right now. All right, so pretty much that is the whole thing. The, the main idea I want you to walk away with is you have to work with the AI. If you don't work with the AI and you try to put it all on the AI, the book is not, the, the chapters are not going to come out sounding right they're not going to sound good you have to tell it i didn't like what you did here this does it yo let me tell you what i did i told it it was coming off real corny the book right something was off the ai had it sounding like some book for third graders so i said i did not i did assume in the beginning but then what I said is, I said, um, well, why don't I just tell it how I want it to sound? So I told the AI, I said, yo, make the book sound more, give the characters more a street edge. Why I do that? It opened up a whole nother, let me tell you something. Your man started cursing. He, I ain't gonna lie. He said it exactly how I wanted him to say it. And I just got excited. And I was like, oh, snap. The character started talking like he was in the streets. I said, the AI know how to talk the street lingo? AI was in the streets, beloved. AI was in the streets, beloved. Swear before God, the AI started talking like a God body in the streets. I was like. Oh, snap. He started calling other people supreme. I was like, what is going on? You could have did that the whole time? That chapter got crazy. That chapter got nuts. All type of gunshots was going off. It was crazy in that chapter. I was excited. I was like, oh, this is wicked. All you got to do is tell the AI, tone it down, turn it up. This is, I want it like, I want the tone to be like this. I want this more descriptive, right? Now, once you finish, I'm giving you the game right now, beloved. You know why?
<laughs> Yo, Splash just said I recruited the AI to the Bloods. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Once you finish your book, okay, this is what you got to do. Let me let me slow it down for the people that may not know. Once it generates the chapter for you, what you have to do is you have to copy copy it and if if you have a Gmail account if you have a Gmail account you open up a cloud um, you open up a um, a doc in your in your cloud in your G in your G cloud, and you you start to put your book there. That's where you're gonna put your book, right? Make two copies if you can. Just make two copies. I try to make a copy of my my. I don't know. You before you used to be able to make a copy. I don't know what happened. But if you can make a copy, put it in the cloud in your G Suite. G Suite has something like Docs, right? Everyone gets it. It's free if you got a G Cloud, if you didn't know. It's in the waffle. The waffle is the nine dots at the top right. Hit that, that waffle, those nine dots. When you hit it, it's going to open up a bunch of apps. In there is, your, is a drive, is slides, is... Uh, is a documentation if you want to put and it's all going to put these things in your slide let me see if i can show you real quick man. all right cool let me just show you real quick. all right up here man Let's see can i zoom in up here you see that that's your waffle when I click on that, I have all of these are apps. All of these is apps right here. So Docs is what I'm talking about. It's going to put it, every, anything you create, you can create forms. That form I have you filling out, I created that form with that right there. So when I go live, see, I'm giving you the jury right now. Nobody going to give you the jury because they feel like you're in direct connection, competition. Right? They don't want you to get ahead. Whatever. But all of this. That's your phone number right there. You got... Oh, you can't see it. Because I'm in the way. But you got Google Voice. All of these is different apps. The main app you worried about right now is... This one right here. Google Docs. You save it there. And... You make a copy. When you finish your book, all your chapters, what you're going to do if you're new to the channel and you just come in and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, Saladin is giving out the jury. Grab your bag. I don't know if you can fit all this jury in one bag today. Grab your bag. I don't know if you can hit all, fit all this jury in one bag today. This is why Solid Jane ain't worried about people, whole hundred people in the room. Because I'm going to keep it real with you. If it was a hundred people in the room, you might not get this jury, right? I'm just funny style like that. Funny style, son. Now, you finished your book. There are other... There are other um, websites that you could go to to get like final editing touches on you. But that's not, that's, you'll figure that out, right? I want to give you the meat and potatoes. You're going to go to a site called Murph AI. Go to Murph AI. Hold up. Before I hit it, I want to make sure you're not seeing stuff you're not supposed to see when I open up my Murph AI. I don't want you looking all in my business, beloved. Okay. Cool. Now. This is an AI voice generator. And I have fun over here, too. 
This is an AI voice generator. They got black voices. They got Caucasian, starchy, educated voices. They have British voices. They have female voices, male voices, boy voices, girl voices. They got them. It's over here. You're going to put in the words. And then it's going to give you, it's going to give it back to you. You do that for your whole entire book, right? Organization, people, organization. Please do it chapter by chapter. So don't try to give it the whole chapter at one time if you have like 10,000 words in your no, no, break it down. You know what I'm saying? I think 5,000 is a good, um, cause at one point I was doing 5,000 words an audio session and right. So you do chapter one and then you save that. You create a folder on your desktop that says the name of your book. And then within that folder, you put another folder called chapter one, two, three. And then in chapter one, you put the audio files for this. This is going to help you tremendously later on. I'm telling you to do it like this so that later on you're not, yo, where did I put chapter one? Where did I put chapter two? Because this is going to, now you're going to later on, what you're going to do is you're going to sell your book three ways. You're going to sell the physical copy. You're going to sell the digital ebook. And then you're going to sell the audio version, right? This thing is about changing our lives right now what are we talking about you think we on facebook you think we doing all this just to have a good old time man if it don't make sense it ain't never gonna make dollars so if it don't make dollars it don't make sense hit the like button hit the like button all right Here's the last piece of jewelry I'm going to give you right now. And then I'm going to get back to my show. And I'm telling you, it's going to work. All you have to do is be willing to try. That's it. Now, if you need an extra few dollars in the house, right? You need an extra $700 a month, right? That's That may be one client. An extra $700 a month. What I did, this popped into my spirit. And I moved on it, right? Because faith without works is dead. So I'm telling you how I did something and I created my reality. I'm not telling you how I did something and it, nah. How to do something and it's, nah. I'm telling you what I did and I caught a client. I said, I want to do digital marketing, social media management, right? Now, there's a difference between social media management, coordination, coordination, social media coordinator. So what I, what I want you to do is kind of look up the different titles for social media management under the umbrella of social media management. To find out how you see which one is going to resonate with you, right? Because... What I'm going to tell you to do is go to a, a small business and let them know what you could do for their business. Now, you have to figure a lot of these small businesses, they're pretty much focused on their business, right? They don't have the time, even if they know about digital media and digital marketing and social media, they don't have the time to do it. And you also have to figure a lot of them are not on social media like that. But just because they're not on social media like that because they're so busy trying to run their business, 
And just because they're not doing it doesn't mean they don't want somebody to push their product out there or their services out there on social media. So, what you could do is you can use that same chat GPT with the same plugin, AI, PRM, which comes with like 2,000 plugins, 2,000 apps that connect to it. And the plugins are going to help you learn social media content and as well as yourself, right? But the most thing that you're worried about is you're worried about the description, the title, the tags, right? So don't, what I'm telling you is don't oversell yourself because believe it or not, I was a little bit too honest with my first client, but my first client liked that. But I, I kind of felt that he would appreciate this. So that's why I told him I never did this before. I think I could do it though. I think I could do it. I never did it before, but I think I could do it. So my first client is actually a restaurant. So they gave me access to their Facebook, to their TikTok, to their Instagram. And when you go in and you add, when you open up ChatGPT and you add the plugin, AI, you have to add the plugin. The regular ChatGPT 4.0, the regular one 3.0, they come naked. They don't come with all these different apps, right? Let me see if I want to show you real quick. I might show you. Hmm. Can't show you. Because it's, it's, it wants me to show you too much. Way too much. Can't do all that. Can't do all of that. So, let me get back to it though. The regular... So, when you download the plugin, it has a whole bunch of stuff to help you out with writing the content for you. So you don't really need to write the content. What you need is for them to send you the pictures. And if they give you access to their Facebook, which owns Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, you can have the chat GPT write all of this stuff for you. And you're gonna ask the chat GPT, write me a description with high SEO potential. SEO stands for search engine optimization, right? This is just to get, this is on the low level of social media management. You're not overselling yourself. You're letting them know. And guess the, the here's the good thing. Facebook has something called meta I'm going to tell you what it was saying. The Meta Suite. It's called Meta Suite, where it can actually give you the analytics. It's going to give you the analytics to see how many people that that post reached out to, right? Now, if you, anything like me, you're going to take those analytics to your next client, right? You say you get the first client and they say, yeah, I'll do this. I'm going to keep it real with you. I just started working with the first client, right? I didn't, I wasn't hung up on how much I'm going to make because I wanted them as a client. I wanted to show them what I could do. So what you do is you use Canva 
right? If you're figuring like, yo, how do I make like good graphics and all that? Just get a, um, just go to something like this. I don't even know if I'm paying for Canva. But I, I, they do give you a 30-day trial. They give you a 30-day trial. So, when you go to Canva, anything in here, anything in here, as far as templates and stuff like that, You're going to be able to um, just, the, the template is already there, right? So if it's a restaurant, like my first client is a restaurant. Your first client may be a doctor's office, may be a law firm. Just type it in the template. They have a template for it. And then change out the address, change out the phone number, change out the picture, download it, ask the AI Tell the AI, I'm about to post um, an ad. Please write me. You can say what the ad is about. You know, I, I did one this morning for Mother's Day because you guys know Mother's Day is coming up. So right now I'm ramping up the promotion for this restaurant, right? So I went to Canva, changed the picture. I chose a template, changed out the, the pictures and all of that. Spoke to the AI, said I'm putting up a post on Facebook. I'm very descriptive with the AI, so it has all the information. I'm putting up a post about Mother's Day uh, for this restaurant. Please write me a post on uh, for Facebook. It wrote out the whole thing. And it gave me the tags. I just put it up there. I added a few more tags. Put the image up there. And that's that. You know what makes it even better? In MetaSuite, you could schedule when you want your post to drop. So suppose you chose your Monday to do your first client, right? Everything on Monday. Well, you could do all your clients probably in one day, right? Just take out a few hours on Monday to do all your clients. Two hours for this client, two hours for this client, two hours for this client, and just schedule them. So my first client, he wants it to drop three times a day. So I just create three posts. I schedule them to drop eight, 12, and four, or eight, 12, and eight. And then I'm out doing my business. At the end of the day, that's one client that could bring in $700, right? I don't know what you're going to charge your, 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 um, your client. But me being wise, having never done this, I say, okay, give me $25 a day. Now, that could be lowballing myself because people pay hundreds of thousands for this type of work, right? But I also know how much I can do, how much I can't do. I don't want them to feel like they're getting slighted later on. That's not how you keep a client. So you kind of kind of work with their budget. But here's a, here's another trick. Don't tell them what you want to like, let ask them what's their budget. Ask them what's their budget. And if they can realistically do it, then you do it. Now you know how to do it. It's not taking you no time at all, bro. You can get this done in, in all your clients done in one day. Now you got, but what happened though? Tell me what happened when you get like 15 clients. You see, I'm already creating my reality. I know I want like 20 clients. And at that point, look what, what look what Saladin going to do. I'm going to teach somebody else how to take my spot now. I'm going to go get the 20 clients. I'm going to teach somebody to take my spot. Like my daughter. And let her do it. She get paid. I got free time all day and night. And that's what this thing is about. So if you know any clients, it don't hurt. They can only thing they could say is no. 
in your area. That's the only thing they could say no. No. But you don't know how many people may be waiting for somebody to reach to, to you know, to somebody that actually does this. Don't oversell yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I gave y'all. I gave y'all. The jewels. All right, let me get back to the show so I can end this show, man. Where we at? Yeah, we had an hour 35. It was a good show. Y'all know I, I don't do more than two hours, but it was a good show. I felt that since we're talking about content creation, I gave you some jewels, something for you to walk away with. You make a couple of dollars for yourself. You change change lives. That may change. I mean, you guys are very innovative and intelligent. So I will not be shocked later on if you be like, yo, I just dropped two books. You know what I'm saying? Them joints is doing good. Number one seller and all that. That's what's up. That's what I want to hear. All right, TuneCore. I think we was at TuneCore. Pat Poos is over there running... Tune core as the and representing the hip hop and rap music over there. Now, Tune core takes 80% of the revenue. It says there's a one, there's a low one time setup fee for all current and future sound recordings. I think Tune core is definitely for the smaller artists. You understand? So, like I said, I would go to TuneCore before I go to DistroKid. I'm never going to DistroKid. Oh, I didn't even put down um, United Masters. All right. I'm trying to figure out why United Masters is not opening up. Let me just go to United Masters. All right, United Masters. Now, this this here company, I believe, was started by Steve Stout. And if I go up here, I kind of want to see, I want to see their plans, man. Right here, right? So, it says you could join for free. Get your first tracks out there. Keep 90% of your royalties and learn the industry. That might be a that might be a good bet. I'm not gonna say your best bet. Because you have to find out what is the back how long do they keep what do they mean by United Masters? Are they keeping anything? Or are you gonna be able to walk away with your music? Or if you walk away, do they own anything? If you decide you no longer wanted to be with United Masters, can you just walk away? These are some of the questions you need to ask. Don't just be posting music out here. At one point in time, everyone was putting their music on DistroKid because that was a sure, for sure way to get your music on a lot of these platforms. That's no longer the case. You don't have to be thirsty. I, I advise everyone to take their time and figure out the best thing to do. It says here, they get you get to keep 100% of your royalties if you pay $60 a year. And then the partner option is invite only. It's about content now. It's not about just music. I heard someone say the other day, rap is dead. I mean... I got a sidebar too. I got a sidebar. Because a lot lot I see a lot of people posting Scarlet's old rap, right? Cuz that's not Scarlet now. You could tell that's an old rap she had put out. And that rap was so touching cuz she talks about how being molested in that rap. She talks about how, you know, nobody was there for her, this that and the third.
And a lot of people were taking like, yo, you don't know nothing about her pain. My thing is this. Why y'all didn't put out that song? Why y'all didn't put out... Why didn't that song... She, if, she, if that song was so hot and she was touching so many souls, which that was a dope song in my opinion, and it did really make me listen to what she was saying, and it did show her capabilities as a poet. But that's not what she was known for. Like, 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 I didn't push that, right? So you got a lot of hypocrites out here. They want the negative energy. It wasn't as if she put out something that was more negative. Then people got behind her. I be watching people, man. People real funny style with it. They real funny style with it. You gonna praise her for that. Everyone praising her for that. Back to the, 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 the masculine energy. All of that, right? But you didn't... When she tried it the other way, you didn't... Nobody wanted nothing to do with her. This is why I don't always fault the artists because I always tell you the artists ain't stupid. They know what they got to do. I don't I don't I don't fault her because everyone no one paid attention to her when she was crying and she was letting everybody know her pain. Everybody was like, "Yo, that's some real shit, that's some real shit." But you ain't do nothing. You didn't you didn't you didn't push that. Even the people that was in power, they didn't push that. They didn't push it until it was negative. Then it was like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, that talk, that talk. I hear you, beloved. I hear you. Um, I think at the end of the day, I just wanted to give some 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 shine on what this dude, um, this dude Larry Jackson was doing, man. Let's take a look. Let's take a listen to a little bit more of that video and then I'm going to end this live. You know, you've been at the top of your game in so many different fields from recorded music, producing, uh, films. I mean, you know, you're, you're an iconic person. What does Gamma bring to you, to your business, to this phase in your professional career? Can y'all raise your glasses up and uh, let's go. Toast to that gin and juice they yeah, gave you on the house juice tonight. Here. <laughs> That's how we're going to start this off. A little something to sip on. Let's go. Somehow they missed mine. What? You had What's some up? in the pack. You already had some. Oh, all right, all right. Took care of you already. Okay, pipe down. <laughs> no, what, uh, what Gamma provides for me is the opportunity to, to grow as an executive and not just be treated as an artist. For many years, I've been the, you know, the front guy, the player, the artist. But now I'm in the part of my career where I wanted to, you know, gradually grow into being an executive to try to step into a whole nother realm. And Gamma gives me the opportunity to exercise that by me purchasing Death Row Records and becoming a CEO rather than being an artist. Now I can make different moves, different plays, and I can have the ability to be creative and innovative and, and to go into the future with somebody like Gamma and Larry Jackson who understands the corporate world, the hood, and the business world that I'm trying to get to. So. It's just an exciting place to be where I can where I can actually thrive as an executive rather than, you know, try to keep doing the same things over and over again as an artist. And Shirley, the, uh, if, I, if, I, if I can interject, I mean, admit the world to me, you know, there's, there's three major labels. There's Universal, Sony, and Warner, of course, right? Snoop could have gone to any three of them, you know, in a very conventional, traditional way and done this deal with them. Um, but the difference of what we have to offer him is actually with the distribution company that I bought, Vidya, um, which is becoming Gamma Distribution, um, Snoop's going to get paid. If Snoop went to one of the other places that I mentioned, he'd be getting paid on a biannual basis, sloppily on a biannual basis. But now we actually have the ability, we have the actual dashboard. Uh biannual is crazy, beloved. Biannual is crazy. I think that's crazy. Uh, financial analytics dashboard, paying Snoop once a month. There's certain artists that are coming through our distribution company that are being paid once a week. You've got to understand how revolutionary this is. This doesn't exist in the music business like this. This is why I've fought so hard to buy a company like Vidya because of the tech stack that they have that almost really makes it like an enterprise software company in that regard. So 
I'm so proud of that that I really have to underscore that, that paying our artists once a month, uh, and in certain cases, once we can get it down to once a week, is something that's never been seen before in the music business in the modern era. That's true. Um, and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You see what Larry, that's why I was so proud of, that was, and that's why I am so proud of Larry Jackson for everything that I said in the beginning, for everything that Snoop um, confirmed that I said. He, you know, he's in the music business. He understands corporate life. He understands the urban life. He understands the music business. So it's like you got somebody that's really up there representing looking like us and it's high time that our children start to see a new visual it's high time for our um, young people to understand the business of the game instead of just being pawns of the game it's high time that we understand as uh the elders in the community that we understand so that we could lead our youth in the right direction and say hold on um young scrappy i may not know all the words that you're saying or whatever you're rapping about but you know if you're trying to turn this into something um how about you look into these things here and you're able to point somebody in the right uh, direction and we keep that connection between the generations right we don't lose that connection between our our youth Oh, Murder Scene is in the house. Murder Scene's in the house. He says that's that Suge Knight energy. What do you mean by that, Murder Scene? Um, do do you mean he was a? You think you think Suge had good energy or bad energy, Murder Scene? Um, not really sure. I want I want you to elaborate on that. And the reason so because you know a lot of these companies like murder inc you know a lot of these guys behind the companies they had great these are brilliant minds irv Gotti is a brilliant mind i may not like how he comes off a lot of times right so i give irv crap but i think he's a brilliant mind at the end of the day and i think he's a hustler and he knows how to get it and i think the same thing with shook you know you like i said a lot of us in the hood got great ideas but sometimes they just need somebody to help them say, yo, won't you do this? Let me show you how to do it. And this is why if you just catch in this. Oh, no doubt. Got you. Heard you murder scene. If you're just catching this right now, you might want to watch the replay. And right in the middle, I gave some jury out right in the middle of this video. And you only get it if you watch the whole video. You understand? And. Those who were supposed to see this video, they were supposed to see it. And they ran off and they did what I said I told them to do. And they're going to make a few dollars. Trust me, they're going to make a few dollars. Murder Scene says Snoop is out here fighting for the artist. And that, he's correct. That was the energy of Suge. After Suge Knight held Vanilla Ice over the balcony by his ankles. Allegedly. You understand? After he took from the artist, he came back and fought for the artist. And, uh, but that was energy. That was Suge Knight's energy. So, right now, in this same video down, is this video is too long. Snoop goes on to say with Larry Jackson, where is the money? You understand? I did a video on Snoop Dogg um, just yesterday. Go check the go check that video out. He's asking the streaming platforms where is the money. So as we evolving and adapting, let's get our minds right to be thinking technically, right? And we adapt to what's going on right now. Murder scene is taken up for Suge Knight. He's like, yo, nobody's perfect. <laughs> Yo, Murder Scene is taking up for Suge Knight. Yo, man, nobody's perfect, man. We all hang people over the balcony every now and then. Name a time you didn't you didn't hang somebody over the balcony, Saladin. Stop acting like that, Saladin. You're right, bro. You're right. 
I mean, look at me now. It was definitely a point in time I had to hammer in your grill piece. Definitely a point in time. I'm not going to say to bring food into the house. I was out. I was out here buying nonsense with that. <laughs> So I'm here buying nonsense with that money, beloved. I'm buying, I'm out here buying Averix jackets. I'm in all type of wheat Tims and peach flavored Tims. And it's crazy and stupid, beloved. Hmm. And then we, then we move into a different phase in our life and we mature. And that's all I ask our people, our young men, our men to do. I meant to do. Be ready to move into that next phase in your life. Because I could guarantee you this. I'm not 20 no more. So there's no need for me to be running around here like a 20 year old. To, no. That left that for the young people though. You understand? Now I am in the phase of eldership. So I should have some something that I could say. that Some type of jewelry that I could give. It's sad when your culture don't have no elders. All your elders are imbeciles. They ain't nobody to lead you in the right direction to tell you how to build and make one and one three. Nobody. All right. My name is Jamel Saladin. You see the email list up there. Subscribe. This is the end of my show. Thank you for tapping in with your boy. You understand? I can't promise I'm going to be on later. I, you might see me on Mac Mean. You might see me on Mikey B S Three. You might see me ten toes down. You might see me anywhere tonight. I have no idea. But this is what I do know. Thank you for coming over here, spending time with me today. That's what I do know. You understand? Shout out to Murder Scene for stepping in the building. Shout out to Splash. 1976 for coming to spend time with your boy. Shout out to Trisha. Always in the house, supporting the channel. You understand? Face mob, all that. Shout out to GMAC914. Shout out to We Rebuilding We. Shout out to Sonia Smith. Shout out to Millie. Shout out to the General Whipwop from Mount Vernon. Hmm? Yeah. That being said, man. Strobe light. Oh, snap. Strobe. Yeah, I, I had to I had to I had to read that a couple of times. I didn't know if my eyes was playing tricks on me. The God Strobe Light is in the house. Shout it out to Strobe Light. Me and Strobe Light, well, I can't say Strobe Light started on the internet with me. I started with him because maybe he was here before me. But I was not on, I was not on YouTube like that. I didn't know nothing about YouTube. I came over to YouTube when China, when China Rim kind of came over to you. He was already over here. He had 700 and something subscribers. So when I came over to his channel, first people I met, I met Strobe Light I met Harlem Legends. I met Avid Chatter. So, you know, that's the home team. That's the home team right there. Um, you know, that's just a special time. Obviously, O5 Voter the Movement have went through several transitions. You understand, too. Um, like I said the other day on Mac Me Show, um, I'm proud to see that he has transitioned because he could hold down the whole show by himself. And I'm like, that's tough. You know what I'm saying? That's tough that he could do that because in the beginning he would not talk. He would not talk. It was like me and strobe, me strobe, like all of legends. We did all the talking and then every once in a while, China bring her in, you know, and he'll tell you, no, nah, no, nah, I'm just listening. I'm just listening. And he's one of those cats. He, he's listening. He's watching. And next thing you know, off to the races with it. You understand? So, appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Yeah. That's the brother strobe light. All right, y'all. About to go check in on my daughter. You know what I'm saying? I told her to give Poppy two hours to go do her thing. Go do his thing. Um, 
So she's getting better, thank God. She um, was homesick two days. We ended up, they ended up going to the hospital last night. But she's okay. She's okay. And she's in the bed there waiting for me. And I'm probably going to go in there and play some video games with her or watch Napoleon Dynamite. She wants to watch Napoleon Dynamite for sure. We just want to laugh at something crazy. And that's a classic movie. So, um, you know, that being said, appreciate you guys. Oh, please share. Yes, yes, no doubt. My brother Strobe, like, um, do me a favor if you can share on your Facebook this here episode and let the people know I was teaching some things and they're going to get a lot out of this episode and subscribe when they get over here. Please do that for your boy. And I appreciate that. That being said, God bless all you guys. Let me put some affirmations in your life real quick before I get up over this thing. Money, big money, more money. Health, joy, peace, serenity, high frequency, undisturbance, big money, health, joy, peace. All right? Cool. Saladin. Talk to you guys later. Peace out.